Hey guys, uh, I haven't left for work yet, so uh, I'm going to make this brief, uh, maybe got 25, 30 minutes. Uh, I didn't even have my third cup of coffee because I feel like I needed to make this video. And my second cup of coffee, I only had about two thirds because the other third, as you see, <laughs> spilled on me. I was trying to rush it down so I could make this video. But uh, don't worry, I'm just going to the warehouse to load my truck this morning. And then before I go out and see any customers, I'll put my nice clean uniform shirt. And I think it'll cover most of it. Maybe I'll see a little bit, but who cares? So as I was reading the Bible today and thinking about things in the church, I had some thoughts and I really feel it's important to share with you guys. So I remember back in the 70s, you know, I was little, but you know, Kind of remember this you know it was, people were scared about it and i looked back and i was right in 1970 there was a uh, time magazine cover that said the coming ice age and all the environmental alarmists were saying because of the pollution uh, that man is causing we're destroying the earth um we're gonna have a coming ice age and then their solution was you know what? Screw our freedoms as Americans. We got to have government control, <laughs> just like the Soviet Union. We got to control these out of control industries, uh, these out of control people. Uh, the government needs to control us because otherwise we're going to have no earth. So what good is freedom if we don't have earth? This was their philosophy. And then scientists came along and said, well, actually, it looks like the earth is warming. <laughs> and they're like, yes, the earth is warming. You know, we... We, we need more government control to control these out of control industries and, 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 and human beings that are polluting the earth. Americans are, are so gluttonous and pollutinous. We need more government control. And then they said, well, you know, actually, the climate's always been changing and, and we're going through a warming phase. Oh, yes. This is climate change, and, and, and this, this change is causing uh, record numbers of hurricanes and, and droughts, and, and we need more government control. <laughs> uh, and then for any thinking person, you realize the issue is not climate control. The issue is not global warming. The issue is not the ice age. The issue is more government control. This is what these environmental alarmists, at heart, they're all communists that lead this movement. And, you know, you have the leaders, the political leaders that use it for power. They don't believe what they're teaching. Then you have the grifters who use it for financial gain. I mean, uh, Al Gore went from not even being a millionaire to being worth over 200 million when he made that ridiculous movie that said, uh, and he got all kinds of prizes, Nobel Prizes, I don't know, you know, which is money, uh, made tons of money when he made that movie that actually said by 2012, polar bears will be, be extinct. There's more polar bears today in the world than there was when he made the movie. He said that Florida and Manhattan would be underwater. I live in Florida. We're not underwater. Like every one of his predictions are wrong, but people just ignore it. And he got filthy rich. So you have the grifters that don't believe it, but they use it to make money. You have the politicians that don't believe it, but use it for power. And then you got the true believers, uh, which Stalin would call useful idiots. Uh, and you see the environmental, uh, there's dozens of environmental terrorist groups. Uh, I remember in the 90s, uh, who was it? The uh, Earth Liberation Front. They burned down the Vail Ski Resort in Colorado, call it, causing tens of millions of dollars of damage. I think they wanted for a lynx uh, paradise or something, you know, the, the cat. So, and there's dozens of these eco-terrorist groups uh, that bomb things, try to kill people. I mean, they're, they're dangerous people because they love trees more than humans, <laughs> you know. Um, and I see the same parallel in the church today. I really do. And, and this theory is a left-wing theory. It's a left-wing strategy. Saul Alinsky in the 60s wrote a book called Rules for Radical. And one of his rules was, the issue is never the issue. Another one of his rules is, uh, 
project, uh, accuse your opponent of being like you, of being what you are. And you see both of those in, you know, left-wing politics today, but they got exposed and they got beat a couple weeks ago. Uh, but I see it in the church as well. And I'll just give you a couple examples. Um, you hear these people say, um, you know, I came back to the church, I think, time flies, maybe like 10 years ago. And I remember people saying, Pope Francis is going to ordain women. And I was like, well, when I was researching to come back to the church, I actually heard a, a um, reporter ask Pope Francis, can the church ever ordain women? He said, that's impossible. Jesus, Jesus created the priesthood and he chose 12 men. So no Pope, no church can change that. Uh, and in fact, you know, when you had some liberal bishops talking about it, uh, he changed canon law 1379 to actually say, if a bishop ordains a woman, that bishop and that woman is excommunicated. Then you hear, well, he's for same-sex marriage. And I said, you know, I give him the, the quota and the, and, the, and the source. You know, he said to Reuters, the church can never allow same-sex marriage because God created marriage. And it's between one man and one woman. No church, no pope can change it. Well, he's going to bless same-sex unions. <laughs> and then he comes out and signs a document that says the church cannot bless same-sex unions because the church cannot, because God cannot bless sin. And, and I can go over dozens of lies that they said, you know, that they believed. You know, and again, you got the you got the useful idiots that believe this. You got the grifters on YouTube that are making money, pushing this false narrative. And then you got the leaders that want it for power. And none of them believe it except the useful idiots, YouTube subscribers to these people. And I, I don't say that in like a demeaning way. It's just a, it's a definition that Stalin used for communist followers that thought communism was really going to help people. Socialism was really going to help people when, when all it does is steal your money. <laughs> so, and... And just like you've seen over in Europe, the Green Party got France and Germany to get rid of all their fossil fuel plants, all their nuclear plants. And then they were dependent on Russia for fossil fuel energy, for coal plants, for all their energy. And guess who funded the Green Party? The Soviet, the Russians, you know. And the same way here, you see, you know, the Democrats pushed... Um, pushed all this uh, green energy, you know, Obama gave billions to all his friends with those uh, that distributed solar panels that were made in China, and they all went bankrupt, all the companies went bankrupt, but the people still made millions. And then you've seen when uh, Kamala Harris was in the Senate, she signed a uh, she co-sponsored a bill with AOC, this Green New Deal that would literally cost $90 trillion. And of course, it didn't see the light of day, but they were, there's, they, those guys might be useful leaders. They might not be the part of the political leaders. They might not know that Schumer and Pelosi just make this stuff up. Um, but you've seen it. Even Biden signed a huge inflation creation bill that gave tons of money to um, companies that would, uh, you know, support EVs, electric vehicles. And then what's China do? They build the, the they start building the biggest. Uh, electric vehicle plant on the border of Mexico and the United States because they were going to just take away all our business for cars. And of course, uh, when Trump got elected, they shut down. They're, moved, they're not building it. <laughs> so, so you see the motivation. There's different motivations. There's political motivation. There's financial motivation. And then there's the true believers that burnt down the Vail Ski Resort in Colorado in the 90s. And again, you see this in the church. You have some true believers that listen to these people, you know, that claim the Pope is, you know, going to change doctrine, the, you know, the Pope is going to do this, Pope is going to do that, and, and they're scared because they are true believers, you know, they're not grifters, and they're, they're not um, looking for political power, or, you know, in the church. Uh, so they believe them, so there's been this movement, and that's what I want to address today, um, because... The issue isn't Pope Francis wants gay marriage. Clearly he doesn't. And then they, once it's like, 
they'll keep repeating the same lie until it's just overwhelmingly proved it's wrong. So then they'll go to another one, just like the liberal media will always have a lie about Trump. So like people's heads are exposed. Oh, did you see this? Did you see this? And they do the same thing with Pope Francis. They gaslight you is what it's called. And you're always saying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, Pope Francis is the worst Pope ever. But the issue isn't Pope Francis. The issue isn't him teaching anything. The issue is never the issue with these scoundrels. The issue is Vatican II. They all hate Vatican II and they want to get rid of Vatican II. And they're using that for political power. So it's political power and Vatican II. And then the grifters on YouTube are, are getting rich. You know, they're making money. The guys that promote these heretics and dissenters. So this is nothing new. I was a Protestant for 30 years. I used to be an amateur, just like him, an amateur. Nobody pays me nothing. I was an amateur, just a regular guy in the church, went to work every day. But I was an amateur apologist, and I would convince Catholics that their Pope was the Antichrist. I mean, I don't mean to laugh. I, I would, it's just so ridiculous. And I would uh, tell them their Pope, their, their church is teaching heresy. And I would say, you need to get back to the tradition of the first century, the second century. But then as I grew in my knowledge of church history and the Bible, I realized the Protestants were wrong. See, there's, a, there's an analogy Protestants always give. I don't know who thought of it, but it's very popular that uh, maybe the Reformers taught this. But, you know, God created the church, the Catholic church. And, you, you, you know, there's no scholar that will uh, dispute this. You know, Catholic Church was the first church, were the first Christians. But over the years, the church started adding stuff. So they, they give an analogy of a ship. So this ship is floating through the ocean, and the Catholic Church is adding stuff, like barnacles on the bottom that don't belong there, man-made traditions. And then the great Luther and the Calvin came along, and they went under the ship and took off all the barnacles and just gave us the true faith. Got us back to the real tradition of the first few centuries. And then as I discovered church history and the teachings of the, the Bible, reading the Bible exegetically, I'm like, no, no, they lopped off real faith. You know, they lopped off a lot of stuff that the church believed. The church didn't add nothing. Protestants got rid of true faith. And Martin Luther's response was the Pope's uh, Antichrist. And you see that all through history, most recently, in the 1800s, Ignaz von Dollinger called the Pope in the 1800s uh, Antichrist because he disagreed with Vatican I. And he started the old Catholics. They were going back to tradition. Back, get this, back to the mass being in the vernacular of the people. They thought Latin was wrong because the church, and the church did change to Latin in the 4th century because the church is led by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit told them to. That's why they went to Latin. Bottom line, uh, there's a lot of practical reasons, but the bottom line is as Catholics, we believe the Holy Spirit guides the church and it guided the church to do the mass in Latin. And they said they're going back to tradition of having communion in the hand because that's how they did it in the first thousand years of the church. Yes, this is true, but the Holy Spirit led the church to only allow communion on the tongue. But these people knew better than the church. They didn't believe that the church got the Holy Spirit. They didn't believe Matthew 16, 18, and 19, that Jesus gave Peter the keys of the kingdom. They say they do. They say they're traditionalists. But they started the old Catholics. And they're still waiting for Vatican I to be rejected and overturned, which it'll never be. Then you move to the 70s. And these guys, I forget I, I forget their names. There's so many. Uh, started the Pal Palermian Church because they believed Vatican II was wrong. The Holy Spirit didn't guide Vatican II. So they rejected Vatican II. And, and this church actually, of course, they called the Pope an Antichrist. This church actually elected four popes since the 70s when they, when they broke away. And then in the 80s, <coughs> you have Marcel Lefebvre. Of course, he calls the Pope an Antichrist. He's excommunicated. And uh, his group was already started, uh, the SSPX. They don't reject the Pope. They're like, no, the Pope's the Pope, uh, but he's just a bad Pope, and Vatican II is evil. Uh, we need to reject Vatican II. So we're Catholics, but we don't accept the largest <laughs> ecumenical council in the history of the Church. And the Mass, the ordinary Mass that came out of Vatican II, 
uh, the Novus Order that 90, I think 99% of Catholics go to is evil. Like they actually said this. I heard uh, Kennedy Hall say, and I was like, is this what they really believe? And I went on the SSPX website and sure enough, the SSPS, who Teller Marshall's always promoting, and Kennedy Hall's a proud member, this cult, the SSPX, explicitly says the Novus Order Mass is evil. And they tell her people don't go. In fact, Kennedy Hall had a video where he said, I'd rather die than participate in a Novus Order Mass. This is blasphemy because we are receiving the body and blood of Christ. Just like we're receiving the body and blood in Christ in the Latin Mass, which is valid and beautiful, the Novus Ordo is valid and beautiful. And they're both licit. That means they're both legal. However, the SSPX is illicit because they're not in communion with the Pope. Even though they say they are, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, we believe the Pope is the Pope. We're in communion with the Pope. We just don't accept <laughs> uh, the councils we don't like, and we don't like your mass, so we'll tell people it's evil. But we're in communion. It's, it's so ridiculous that people actually believe this nonsense. But then you go on to more recently. Uh, Father Altman called the Pope uh, an Antichrist. Vigano calls the Pope an Antichrist. And then Vigano joins a cult called the Resistance. And I put up a video, I, I should have pulled it up to get the guy's name, but some priest from the Resistance cult. I, and I'll see if I can pull it up and put it in the comments or put it on my community board. But if you watch me, you've seen it. Now, if you're my, one of my subscribers, he was a, cult, he was a uh, French, sounded like a French guy uh, from the Resistance cult. And uh, he said Vigano was reordained by twice excommunicated <laughs> bishop. You can't make this stuff up. Twice excommunicated Bishop Williamson, who got thrown out of SSPX because he was such a heretic. Um, and Vigano is ordaining, reordaining priests, and they're rebaptizing Catholics. All are grave sins. For a Catholic to be rebaptized, for a priest to be reordained, this is all grave sins. And this is what the resistance are doing because they don't accept Vatican II. Again, the issue is never Pope Francis. The issue was they don't like Vatican II. And they like this power. I think Vigano was hoping to be the Pope of the resistance, you know. But it was very sad for me to recently to see the new show in town, Bishop Strickland. I used to like Bishop Strickland. In fact, I called his office once and we were trying to work it out on his schedule where he can come on because I had seen him. I had seen him on a YouTube channel. And he was talking about the new evangelization. And uh, he struck me. As someone who knew the Lord and he was more pastoral, kind of reminded me of Pope Francis. You know how they say like Pope Benedict was like this phenomenal, brilliant theologian, but Pope Francis is more like a pastor, like a shepherd. Um, and that's what I kind of seen with like Bishop Strickland compared to like uh, Archbishop Timothy Broglio, who I interviewed, the, uh, the president of USCCB. He seemed like a brilliant theologian, but he had the combination like Pope Benedict. He had the loving pastoral, but he was also very theological. Bishop Strickland seemed like someone who loved the Lord, like Pope Francis, and was very pastoral. But as I watched him, you know, because getting ready, I was thinking I was going to have him on. I realized, well, he doesn't have that deep understanding of the Lord like Pope Francis. Like Pope Francis, you just knew, like even as an evangelical, I just knew like this guy loves the Lord. He's got he's at a different level spiritually. And um, if you watch the Unity Conference I was a part of on John Leap's evangelization, Father Hernan, I believe his name is, who's no, known Pope Francis his whole life, said Pope Francis was a superior of his order. And he said, number one, he was a servant. He would iron their clothes in the morning, make them breakfast, and then he would go out into the slums and, and serve the poor. He's a true servant like Christ. You know, Christ came to serve, not to be served. And Pope Francis is a great example of that. But he said in the evenings, he would teach the spiritual um, laws of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And he said he just, he was their spiritual direction. He would just take them to such a deep spiritual level. He was on a whole different level. And I could see that with uh, Pope Francis. Bishop Strickton, he kind of seemed a little shallow in that area. Not, nothing, you know, we're all at different levels. Um, so I thought he was getting deceived by these guys because maybe he wasn't as as educated, but then I looked him up. The, guy, the, guy, the guy's not dumb. He has the all shucks, Texas, you know, good old boy talk, but very educated man. Has like a PhD and a doctorate, I think. So like, you know, two, two, two doctorates, I guess you would say. But, um, so he's not dumb, you know? 
So why is he, the other day, outside of the USCCB, who's led by a very conservative, godly man, Archbishop Timothy Broglio, who I had on the show, and we talked about when Obama was president, and he told the clergy and the military, because he's a, before he became the president of the USCCB, he was the Archbishop of the military. He's my son-in-law's Archbishop, because my son-in-law is in the army. So for the whole military... And he said when Obama told the clergy they have to uh, marry same-sex couples, he said he told Obama to his face, I will not allow any of my priests to marry same-sex couples. And he's like, well, can you bless their unions? He said, no, my priests will not bless any. I mean, he told Obama face to face and Obama backed down and he said he, he would have the full support of Pope Francis. Yeah, you don't do that. I mean, this is you don't even think about that. So this is not some liberal that runs the USCCB. And the USCCB, this election, helped Trump get elected because they said the number one issue was abortion. So this is not some liberal group, but uh, Bishop Strickland, you know, the Bishop Strickland show, and, and, and all these shows are the same, and they always end the same way with the person getting excommunicated and then calling the Pope an Antichrist, and then having some followers follow him, and then they say, whoever didn't follow me, you're in the ape church, or you're in the fake church, you're in the false church, we're in the real Catholic church. Even classic Catholics today will comment, we're the real Catholics. <laughs> From like, either following Lutheran, they're Lutheran saying they're the real Catholics, and you know, you'll, you'll have Catholics say that, if you don't follow me, you're in the ape church, you're in the fake church. We're in the real Catholic church. And you have some useful idiots that will follow them and donate money and buy their books and get them rich. So they'll gain financial and political power through these lies. And Bishop Strickland's show was on display. He didn't bother going in like St. Athanasius would or all the great saints and confront the bishops with what he thought they were doing wrong. He sets up a big camera, goes on YouTube with all his supporters, and he calls these bishops like cowards and and i'm going to paraphrase but you can look it up he basically said they were teaching heresy the pope was an antichrist i mean just as horrible things about these bishops right outside but he says it in an all shucks kind of nice way so you know it's like oh he's so humble you know um but he's falling down the same path you know so what heresy oh he's gonna ordain women no he changed canon law so you can't ordain women. Oh, he's going to blame sex, se he's going to allow same-sex unions. He said if the church can't bless same-sex unions. In fact, he, Pope Francis, um, excommunicated Father Greg Reynolds for promoting the idea of blessing same-sex unions. No, he's not going to do that. Oh, well, the Sinai is going to teach Harris, he's going to change doctrine. The leaders of the Sinai actually came out and said, the Sinai cannot change any church doctrines. <laughs> oh, well, he said, the, he said the other day that all religions lead to God. No, that's not what he said. <laughs> he, you have to take him in context. And he said, all religions are passed to God. And I tell people that too. But there's only one religion that can get you to God. See, all the other religions are passed to God going up this mountain. Christianity, God came to us. And our path is bow down and ask for mercy. So the context, I mean, I did a video about it, but I'll, I'll briefly say this. He's talking to majority of Muslims and Hindus and sheiks with some Christians in the audience. And in this country, they were literally killing each other. So he said, there needs to be a dialogue. All religions, all your religions are a path to God. You're trying to get to God. The way you have dialogue is respect, listen to one another and talk to one another. He wasn't taking sides. He was telling them how to, how to, how to communicate. And, and, and I had many quotes of him saying, Christ is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the only way to the Father. So he believes in the Catholic faith. But, you know, if, I, if I'm evangelizing, and most of these YouTubers never evangelize, you know, they do it on YouTube, but, you know, they never talk to, uh, they would never be a friend of a sinner. I mean, they, they criticize Pharisees criticized Jesus because he had ate and supped with sinners and prostitutes. And these YouTubers criticized Pope Francis because he had a thousand hookers at lunch during the pandemic because they were starving. And uh, some of them were trans and they're like, Pope Francis had lunch 
with transgenders. Oh my goodness, he's a friend of sinners. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's too much like Jesus for these Pharisees. But um, I'm looking at the time. I got to hurry this up. But the point was, if I'm evangelizing three people, one's a Christian, one's a, a Muslim, and one's a Hindu that want to kill each other, and they both want to kill the Christian, I'm going to say, listen, you guys need to calm down. Show respect for each other. You know, you all have your path to God. There's, you know, Every religion is a path to God. Why don't you dialogue and see which is the true path? We should never be afraid of that because we know we have the truth. So that we have the truth. So we should never be afraid to dialogue and talk. And Jesus said, love your enemies, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. That's all Pope Francis was saying. And he took them way out of context. So, you know, I I'm praying that Bishop Strickland repents because a lot of people are following him. And he's got, you know, just like politicians, like people thought Obama was so nice, but his, his policies were just as evil as Biden. He was just a way better speaker and came across a lot nicer, you know. And the same thing with Bishop Strickland. His, what he's saying is just as evil as Vigano. And all these guys are cowards in my book. Vigano wouldn't even go to his uh, excommunication. And he's always in the shadows. You know, not, you never see him live talking. He's always talking through his, his puppets. You know, Taylor Marshall, LifeSite News, all these puppets will say what Vigano says. I never see Vigo talking. And, and I remember one of the exorcists I interviewed said, demons hate the light. They hide in the darkness. And, and this is Vigano, always in the shadows. And even that priest from the resistance cult said, Vigano's doing, a, Vigano's doing a good job talking to other bishops. And they said, well, what about Bishop Strickland? He said, well, he's in Bishop Strickland's ear. Vigano's in Bishop Strickland's ear, his exact words. But Bishop Strickland isn't ready to reject Vatican II yet. And he, and he still, and he isn't ready to reject the... Uh, the ordinary mass. That's what he said. He said, but Vigano's still in his ear. He said, if we could get him to reject those two things, he could join the resistance. So if you see Bishop Strickland start criticizing Vatican II and start criticizing the new mass, then you know they got him. Let's pray they don't get him. Let's pray he repents and becomes a strong, faithful bishop once again. Now, if you're... A lot of people say, well, you know, Number one, everything they're saying about the Pope is wrong. It's been disproven. But even if it was true, the way they're going about it breaks canon law. 1373. One who publicly either stirs up hostilities or hatred among subjects against the apostolic see, the Pope, or against an ordinary, the bishops that he was, Bishop Strickland was bashing, on account of some act of ecclesiastical power or ministry, their teaching, or incite subjects, their followers on YouTube, to disobey them is to be punished by interdict. And just like legalists and Protestants will take the Bible out of context to mean what they want to mean, I noticed these legalists, Pharisees, and Catholicism don't really know their Bible well, but they'll take tradition and canon law and saints out of context. And, and the way they take this law out of context, they were like, oh, well, canon law says it's our duty to call out these priests when they're wrong. So I said, well, what canon law says that? So they give me the canon law, and I'll read it to you. Canon law 212. The Christian faithful, conscious of their own responsibilities, are bound by Christian obedience to follow what the sacred pastors, as representatives of Christ, declare as teachers of the faith, or determine as leaders of the church. And you might say, well, why would they quote that? That's the exact opposite of what they're saying. Exactly, but there's a part they take out of context. I'll bring it to you. The Christian faithful are free to make known their needs, especially spiritual ones, and their desires to the pastors of the church. Yeah, you tell your priest, hey, you know, I really feel like we need more confession here. You know, it's only once a week and I can't make it. Or why do we only have adoration once a week? You know, make your concerns, spiritual needs. Okay, and then this is, this. so there's like, that's Canon Law 212. And that was uh, chapter, uh, I don't know, verse 1, verse 2. Now, verse 3, this is the one they take out of context. In accord with the knowledge, competence, and preeminence which they possess, they have the right, and even at times, a duty. It's our duty to call out these heretics. This is what you hear all the time. To manifest to the sacred pastors their opinion on matters which pertain to the good of the church. And they have a right to make their opinion known to the other Christian faithful with due regard for the integrity of the faith and morals, and key word, 
reverence toward their pastors and with consideration for the common good and the dignity of persons. Reverence for their pastor means you don't call the Pope an Antichrist. You don't, as Taylor Marshall calls Pope Francis, Francis the Destroyer. That's, that's the only verse they, they have. Totally out of context. And then when you say, listen, it's point blank, canon law. And every Catholic is obligated to follow canon law. It says it straight up. Canon law 1404. The first C, the Pope, is judged by no one. So this is why they got to run in their corner like little rats and say, well, the Pope isn't the Pope. He's not the Pope. He was, it, it, it was a conspiracy. Pope Benedict was too scared to say it, but he gave us messages. He gave us signals. Yeah, he gave us like the, the signals, you know, like he wore white. <laughs> he really didn't, Pope isn't really the Pope. So, I mean, if you believe that craziness, you know, Coffin, uh, Patrick Coffin went on that crazy train a couple of years ago. Um, I think he needs to change his meds, honestly. And I say that with no disrespect. Um, or get off him if he can. But uh, another thing they'll say is, well, St. And again, they take saints out of context. It's like they take Ken Law out of context. St. Robert Bellamy said if a pope were to teach heresy, he would no longer be a pope. Well, let's read the whole thing in context. St. Robert Bellamy said, well, if a, if a pope... Uh, Hypothetically, if a pope taught heresy, he would no longer be a pope. But we have, we have the promise in Matthew 16 and 18 that the gates of hell will not prevail. So that could never happen. That could never happen. And even if he said it the way he said it, that wasn't official church teaching. That was a saint giving his opinion. Canon law says the pope can't be judged by no one. Then they'll say, well, then they'll use one. It's funny because us Protestants used to use to... Uh, attacked the Catholic Church. Well, Pope Honor, Honoris taught heresy. No, he didn't. He was condemned for allowing heresy to be taught. He, he For whatever reason, maybe he was afraid, what, he was lazy, whatever reason, Pope Honoris was never condemned for teaching uh, heresy. He was condemned for allowing heresy to be taught. No Pope has ever taught heresy. And this is why so many of us evangelicals are coming back. Under Pope Francis, it's like an army of evangelical comes back. Since, since Vatican II, forget about it, you know? The church is more than doubled in size, and a good portion are Protestants who realize, wow, the Catholic Church's claim that Jesus started the church and he would protect it from the gates of hell, that they never changed the doctrine or dogma, even when they had bad popes. And we have a great pope now. But even when we had bad popes that like slept with women and had illegitimate children, even those popes never taught heresy. They never taught heresy. That's what attracts so many evangelicals to come home to the Catholic Church. And yet you have these people that claim to be Catholic saying the Pope teaches heresy. It's like, my friends are like, why would I want to go to your church? Your Pope's a heretic. I mean, like, it makes no sense. But why do these people do it? Why do these people do it? I'll tell you why. 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. St. Faustina said, The devil can imitate humility and seem like a humble bishop, but the devil can never imitate obedience. St. Padre Pio, even when he was falsely accused of something and was told he could not say Mass, when the people got mad he said no 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 stop go home respect your bishops because the will of my superiors is the will of God all the saints through history one thing they had in common they all had different personalities some were outgoing and funny some were serious contemplative but they all had one thing in common obedience so today you could choose to be disobedient like these YouTube bishops and priests and these YouTube grifters or you can choose to be a saint and be obedient. And one more scripture verse I want to share with you. Because you say, man, these guys seem so holy. They seem so righteous. Paul warns us about these people. And no wonder. This is 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. And no wonder. For even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is not strange if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. His servants... 
kind of appear as angels of light, basically. Servants of Satan. You want to know if they're a servant of Satan? Are they obedient or disobedient? If Satan hates obedience, he cannot imitate obedience. And getting back to Vatican II, I'm trying to rush. I would say, you know, the church, the Holy Spirit led the church to do the Mass in Latin, to take communion on the tongue. But then in the 60s, that same Holy Spirit told the same church, now it's time to say the Mass in the language of the people. We need a new evangelization. The grace of God's pouring out more than ever. It says we're, The Bible says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And the sin abounded in the 60s, 70s, and even today. And grace is abounding more. We have to reach more people. So it allowed the same Holy Spirit. And the reason we know it was right, because the church told us it was right. And that same Holy Spirit said the people can have communion in their hands if they receive it reverently. Why do we know that's right? Because the same church that told us to stop it, told us to do it. It's the same Holy Spirit. You know, we may have preferences, but we need to have obedience. And if you're Catholic, just basic, you know, just like these gaslighters on TV with politics, they just hit you with so much negative about Trump. If you didn't see the alternative, you would believe that he was an antichrist. They do the same thing about Pope Francis and same thing about Vatican II. But if you're Catholic, we have to accept all the church councils. We have to accept canon law. And we have to be obedient to our Pope, bishops, and priests. God bless and stay Catholic.